Welcome back to the show right here on Sports Radio 95.9 The Fan. And right now here on the Club 52 Hotline, great friend of mine up there in Gainesville, covers the Florida Gators for a fine website called FightingGators.com. His name is Cody Jones. Cody, how are you doing today? Doing well, Mark. How's it going? Hey, I'm doing just fine. Finally got to meet you in person a couple weekends ago up there in Gainesville during the Orange and Blue debut, the spring game. And let's start there. What were your thoughts on that game? I mean, 23-23 tie. I mean, what did you take out of the game? Yeah, you know, I think there's only so much you can take out of it just because, you know, it pretty much is just another practice for the coaches. They're obviously... Kurt Roper's not going to go out there and showcase everything he can do and put that on film for other teams that are watching it. So I think you kind of have to take a lot of it with a grain of salt. But I, but I, I did think it was kind of most of what you saw during spring practices, the open practices, I think carried into the game. You saw an offense that, that looks a lot more comfortable in what it's doing. Very similar passing game with a lot of the receivers catching the ball, uh, closer to the line of scrimmage, a lot of the crossing, the, the drag routes that they've implemented in this offense. I think that's an important part of it. But other uh, other than that, I think it's a, you know, a little hard to maybe judge the offense based on, on that one day. Um, and for the most part, you know, the defense has outplayed pretty well. They're going to rotate a lot of guys in. They had uh, Dante Fowler and Vernon Hargraves were out. They didn't want to risk any injury or anything with them. And they, they know what those guys can do on the field. So they actually didn't you know, and play in the game. Uh, and they, they gave a lot of shots to some young guys. I think that was the goal going in, and, and they're pretty happy with the way that turned out. What were your thoughts on Muschamp overall here in spring? I mean, coming off a 4-8 and eight campaign, I mean, a lot of pressure on him to perform and, and win now. I mean, what were your thoughts on how he handled spring practice and just the overall mojo of Will Muschamp right now? Yeah, he was, he was a lot different. You know, it was really interesting because as much stress and frustration as went into the fall for this team, he came out in the spring and, and with, with the media and his press conference was so uh, – seemed happy. I guess that's probably the, the simplest way to yeah. put it. It was very different from, I think, what most people expected you know, going into a year that has a whole lot of pressure built into it for him. So I think that, that certainly uh, was a surprise to me, at least, uh, just how, how just easygoing he seemed and just kind of laughing. He was very, uh, maybe just a little bit more playful than, than we've kind of seen him be in recent years. So uh, I think that, that kind of, you know, the, the, the viewpoint that there's a lot of pressure on him, and I think there certainly is, that kind of maybe alleviated that, whether on, on his part it was just to avoid that. I'm not sure, but it, it was definitely more laid back, I think, than anybody expected this spring. We're here with Cody Jones, FightingGators.com, part of the Scout Network, and you can follow him on Twitter. It's a must if you like the Gators or the SEC at C. Jones Scout. And look, you brought up Kurt Roper before in our conversation. Was he the MVP here of spring practice where everyone just wanted to see what this guy could bring to the table for the offense? Yeah, absolutely. It certainly feels like that. You can see the players are really bought into what he's doing. That's the main thing about this offense is just building some confidence back in it because you know, I don't think Brent Pease is as bad of an offensive coordinator as, as it looked in, in the past few years uh, in, of his tenure here at Florida, but they needed some optimism on the offensive side of the ball. They needed something to show the players and say, look, this is what this offense can do and just try to re- rebuild some of the confidence that was lost over the past few seasons. And I think the easiest way to do that, honestly, is throwing some Duke film on there and showing a 10-win season at Duke and what that offense did. And I think that's a really easy easy way that they've done it. Uh, and uh, they've certainly built that in. Uh, a lot of the players have talked about that, too, how much they've enjoyed just watching film of Roper's offense last year and the way that it gets the ball to play, to, out to the playmakers and lets them uh, just kind of go from there. So that's something they're extremely excited about. But there's no doubt this is still something that I think people are, are are skeptical of just because it's looked this way in spring before. And then in the spring, the offense has had success in the spring. It's something there's no doubt they have to carry in the end of the season. They, they, once the fall gets here, they've got three games before they hit the road for Alabama, three games that should be favored in to start the season. Uh, and after that, you know, it, it, it kind of gets into the, the grueling middle of the SEC schedule. So it, there's no doubt, though, I, I don't think there, there's any question that the MVP of the spring was certainly Roper, just bringing some sort of optimism some semblance of a competent offense to Gainesville, something that I think a lot of people have been missing for, for years now. Yeah, it's a good point. Cody, will you talk about the quarterback, Jeff Driscoll, coming off the injury. He's going to have a new offense coordinator, like you said, Roper, third since he's been here. Is he going to change his game, or is he still going to try to do Jeff Driscoll things out there come this fall? I think we're going to see a very similar Jeff Driscoll to what you saw two years ago when this offense, uh, when this, this team went to the Sugar Bowl. What they did with him back then, there's a lot of zone read offense, a lot of keeping the ball in his hands, letting him make decisions in the running game that way. Because, you know, obviously he's in the greatest decision maker in, in the passing game. I think he has a lot of room to grow in that area. But in terms of the run game, the zone read and everything, I think he's really skilled at making decisions there and it allows him to use his athleticism uh, outside the pocket and really make some plays that way. So I think that's something you'll see them change with the offense, just going to that, more, that uh, type of a run game. 
as far as the, the passing game, I think it's it still it's kind of up in the air for me because I, the inconsistencies we've seen throughout the, the uh, Jeff Driscoll's career here, I think we're still kind of there in the spring. And you know, part of it, uh, there's, there's a lot of the the injury talk with him, and I get that. And I think that is uh, still a big part of that as well. You you got to think of a guy that, that broke his leg last fall coming into the spring. There's going to be a ton of rust that he had to knock off. I thought you saw that throughout the spring. He got a little bit more comfortable within the passing game, but it's still something that he needs to improve at. I think a fairly decent amount because there was a lot of inconsistency there, especially when you're throwing the ball down the field. You know, you see him. And I think he showcased he showcased this in the spring game as well. And the ball is five five to ten yards from the line of scrimmage. It's pretty accurate. They're always going to get it out quick and get it to the guy. But once you start getting fifteen, twenty plus yards down the field, that's when some of the inaccuracies have, have crept up and maybe the decision making as well. So that's something I think that they're just going to have to to work with a little bit. But there's no doubt that the, the biggest goal for him this spring was to get out of it healthy make sure he, the, the leg wasn't an issue whatsoever. And by all accounts, that certainly is what happened. Well, you talk about throwing the ball down the field. In your estimate, who are the top three receivers going into fall camp? I mean, the three big targets who Driscoll can get the ball to. Yeah, you know, they must have said that they've, they feel comfortable with about six or seven right now. I think if you're looking at the top three, uh, Quentin Dunbar, I think, is the unquestioned guy. He's a redshirt senior. He's been here forever. Just from a leadership standpoint, a guy that they really look up to quite a bit and, and trust at that position. So I think he'll be one of those guys. Uh, outside of that, you know, you saw a guy like uh, Latroy Pittman, a junior here, who's had some big moments uh, in springs before, but never really put it together in the fall. He ended the, uh, the spring as, as a starter. I think you could see him potentially in that mix there. But the three guys that I'm looking at are, are actually all sophomores, and they all made an impact a little bit last year. Ahmad Fold was a guy that made a huge impact. I think uh, the biggest of the three freshmen, um, and then certainly had some moments as well. Demarcus Robinson, I think, is the most talented receiver on this entire roster. If he can mature off the field a little bit more. Uh, maybe buy into the offense like they think he's done this spring. I think they're expecting big things out of him. And then the, the, the breakout guy, I think, the spring was Chris Thompson, who actually uh, went, uh, graduated from Gainesville High School. He's kind of seen more as a speed guy, a downfield threat, uh, maybe not as big as some of the other receivers coming out of high school. He's added weight, and he's kept the speed, and he's become more of a complete receiver. So he'll play a lot this year as a sophomore. I think he's going to have a really big season. So I'd say probably – once you get past the Quentin Dunbar, it's kind of a jumbled mess out there. But those three sophomores are the three that I'm really excited to see this fall. You know, you talk about Robinson there for a second. Uh, he was supposed to be doing stuff last year for this team. I mean, is he just one of these question marks where we're not sure what we're going to get from him come fall? Yeah, you know, you think back to last year, too. He had two suspensions. He was suspended for the Tennessee game and then suspended for the final two games of the season as well. So I think a lot of it is just the maturation, maturation process off and can he get used to college life and being on his own but still be able to handle his own responsibilities. I think that's something that they really believe he has taken steps in in the offseason to get to that level. Uh, but you just never know until the fall gets here and, and he shows that he's capable of doing that. So there's no no question, though, when, when you get the ball in his hands uh, and you can line it up, like he's a guy that can get open basically at will and then he can really make plays after, after the catch as well. I really believe he is the most talented receiver on this team, but he has got to, to keep his head uh, where it belongs during football season and, and avoid some of these suspensions that have really cost him because it, it, if this keeps happening, it's just something where you could potentially see a guy maybe dig it, uh, dig a hole too deep at Florida and they have to look somewhere else. But as of now, I think they're extremely optimistic about how, where he's at after the spring. Uh, they, they really think he's going to have a big season this year. We're here with Cody Jones, Fighting Gators on the Club 52 Hotline talking about Florida Gator football. And what about the running back position? Kind of the same question. What's the depth chart there? Is it Kelvin Taylor one, then these other guys coming back? I mean, what are your thoughts on the running back position? Yeah, I think it's, it's certainly Kelvin Taylor at the top after the spring, but the, the, the questions begin when, when the fall gets here and Matt Jones is healthy because he's a guy that they like quite a bit, a really big guy. Uh, that, that they, I think, and he, he and Taylor can provide them maybe a one-two punch uh, up the middle. And what Mushab actually said uh, in the spring that their best offensive personnel uh, unit that they've used so far has been three receivers and two running backs. So it sounds like they really like uh, the thought of having multiple running backs on the field at the same time, and it, it's a good thing because they're extremely deep at that position. My, uh, you, you can pass those two guys. You think of a guy like Mac Brown who actually rushed for over 100 yards in the season opener last year. Everybody kind of forgets uh, how good he was in that game. You got a guy like Adam Lane who really had his breakout time, I think, uh, publicly at least uh, in the spring game. But people have really liked what he's been doing for a while now. Mark Herndon, a walk-on that earned a scholarship last year, another guy that they really trust and want to get involved in some way. And then actually a freshman, Brandon Powell from down in South Florida, a guy that they uh, recruited because of his speed. That's a, a, a dynamic to this running back position that 
Florida doesn't really have, and they really wanted to get one of those speed guys on the roster. He was held out with a foot injury for most of the spring, but they are extremely high on him as well. So I think, in, in, in my mind, that running back position is actually the deepest on the roster. They're going to have a, they're going to have to be creative in how they get the ball to people. I think that's going to be another interesting thing to watch is how do they manage carries and how do they uh, even manage snaps. And then you have five running backs that you really trust, and maybe even more after that. So. Uh, they're extremely high on this group, though, and there's no doubt. I think it, it has to be really good for this offense to be what they think it can. Switching gears real quick to the defense. I know in post game after that spring game, Muschamp was talking about the depth of the defense line or lack of. What were your thoughts on how the defense line looked in that game and spring practice? Yeah, I think it, you know you look at the, at the depth chart, it, and you feel pretty solid uh, if you're a Florida coaches about that first team. You know, you know, you understand what you're going to get out of Dante Fowler. He's going to be extremely uh, disruptive off the edge. The challenge to him has just been consistency this spring and, and, and playing like he's capable every day, and they're, they're confident with the strides he's made there. Uh, the other defensive end position, I think, gets a little more complicated with, the, with uh, the move that they made of Jonathan Bullard, sliding him to defensive tackle a little bit more this spring. He'll play uh, outside and inside, but uh, maybe not as a full-time guy out there. It opens up the spot, and, and the guy that emerged was uh, St. Thomas Aquinas alum. Uh, Brian uh, Brian Cox, they're really confident in him, and he had a really big spring as well. So they feel good about those edge spots. You look inside, you've got a guy like Leon Orr that missed the spring with a wrist injury. Uh, Darius Cummings as well. Those two uh, seniors, I think, are really going to be uh, big factors on that defensive line. But the issue becomes once you get past those first four or five guys, then who do you go to? They, they've got these three defensive tackles, uh, and Jaynard Boswick, Antonio Riles, and Caleb Brantley. Uh, that they really think are, are, are a really good signing class two years ago, but it's just a matter of consistency for them. They're still really young, still a little immature at times, and, and they've got to be able to uh, to handle the every every rep attitude instead of maybe taking a couple plays off. It's just an effort thing for those guys, and, and maybe conditioning to a certain extent as well. So they they feel good about those guys uh, in terms of the future, but maybe just not yet. They really need those guys to come on this fall and, and be able to add some depth to where they can play a, a high number of defensive linemen like they would like to. All right, I know we're running out of time here. So now what's next, Cody? Baseball? We're trying to get to Omaha? What's going on exactly? Yeah, Florida baseball team is doing extremely well. They actually have the, the top RPI in the country right now. Um, played extremely well since after struggling the first couple weeks of the season. Uh, and, and they're riding a really hot streak right now. They've got one of the best resumes in the country. And uh, they're uh, certainly, I, I believe, they're four weeks away from the end of the season before it's tied at the top of the SEC with Alabama right now. It's going to be good stuff. Well, I appreciate coming on all season long. we got to get you on again, but his name is Cody Jones, Fighting Gators. Follow him on Twitter at Scott for everything with Florida sports, baseball, basketball, and football. Cody, appreciate your help, and, yeah, let's get you on again. All right, Mark, sounds good.